Hey the Wootsuit family, it's Ryan here. So normally, I tend to ramble and I try to make these really clever videos where I'm sharing something or teaching you something. And today I just want to share with you a really fun idea that I got from a podcast recently. Uh, just because I thought it was cool. Jim and I have talked about toxic masculinity on this channel before, so it's not really a new thing for me to discuss. I will say that I am not a person to really add anything of value to the conversation. I still have a lot of thinking to do on the topic and a lot of reading and understanding, but I was listening to the Art of Manliness podcast recently. They're talking about what does Plato's Republic have to say about manliness? And I know Jim's kind of watching this and kind of chuckling to himself because of course, that's exactly what I'm going to be listening to. It's manliness and it's Plato mashed together. Anyways, so I'm listening to this podcast and they're talking about the views espoused in Plato's Republic and what it kind of means. And the, the guest on the episode was talking about how Plato puts Socrates forward as a new ideal of manliness. And it was really interesting and I, I've probably heard this before, but I was reminded and I thought it was really interesting that for all of the belly aching that goes on today with people talk, criticizing the idea of highlighting and speaking out against toxic masculinity as somehow people, you know, these it's all soft people who are easily triggered, but people like Plato two and a half thousand years ago, we're criticizing the very idea of toxic masculinity. And sometimes we forget that there are really no new ideas. Everything is kind of old and I wouldn't say it's recycled, it's more updated. And as you develop new tools, you talk about it in different ways. So in the podcast, they're talking about how the Greeks thought about masculinity and the, the traditional Homeric virtues, you know, Achilles being a, a great warrior and a person who's incredibly courageous and incredibly brave and incredibly strong and how this was held up uh, as the idea of masculinity. And Plato, through Socrates, subverts that idea. First by understanding that manliness is couched in an idea of trying to never appear cowardly or shameful, that you, in order to be manly, you have to be create, uh, courageous and you have to you know, rush off and, and rush into battle. But Socrates, you know, approaches it from a different angle and Plato has Socrates stand up for what he believes in as being the, the, the height of virtue, that no matter what happens, there's no shame in turning away from what doing what you think is right. And so Socrates ends up ultimately dying for his beliefs and dying doing what he thinks is right. And Socrates and Plato holds this ideal up as the new virtue to aspire towards. And in some sense, and it distances itself from the Homeric virtues that, especially in Plato's Republic, you get rid of the poets and whatnot because they're not useful. They don't give us a useful view of how we want our citizens to be. Instead, we want people to do what they think is right, regardless of you know the shame that it that is brought upon them or the consequences that come because of it. And it was really interesting because when I thought about it, I'm like, well, that is a critique and a subversion of the idea of toxic masculinity that Homer and Achilles and whatnot, you know, courage for the sake of valor is in their eyes toxic. It's not useful. It's not for the most part, it's not practical. It's not something that you want people to be aspiring towards. That was really interesting. Anyways, I just wanted to share that little bit with you and I thought it was really interesting. Anyways, thanks for stopping by and don't forget, stay awesome.